so throughout this week, you'll be hearing from some fresh new voices. And today, uh, we will be supporting and listening to what our brother Matt has to share with us today. So just wanted to kind of preface that as an intro for what's going to be happening throughout the week. You'll be hearing from um, a couple of young brothers. My brother Matt is um, on deck. So brother, when you are ready, um, we will give you the floor. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom everyone. All right, I'm live. Praise Yah. <laughs> uh, praise Yahuwah. If y'all could uh, just pray with me for, um, to Yah to get this steam, for him to get the glory. This is all for him. Um, and yeah, so just pray with me. Yeah, by We come to you humbly in the name of Yahushua Mashiach. As we gather, we're gathering, Abba Yahuwah, as you, as you have ordered us, or instructed us to do, Abba Yahuwah, we ask that you manifest yourself. Let your Ruach rest upon me and upon all those hearing, Abba Yahuwah. Speak through me, Abba Yahuwah, and let everyone be fed fresh manna from heaven. Allow uh, your words to be spoken, not none of my own, Abba Yahuwah, but which will, will be edifying to all those hearing, Abba Yahuwah, even myself, Abba Yahuwah, Abba Yah. Uh, help us to grow, Abba Yahuwah. Continue to instruct us. Give us attentive ears, Abba Yahuwah, on, in hearts, Abba Yah, that when we hear a word that 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 sparks something in us, Abba Yah, that we 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 grab hold to it and 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 further study or further look into it, Abba Yah. Um, we ask Abba Yah that you, Abba Yahuwah, um, because when we're, where your ruach is, Abba Yahuwah, there's deliverance, there's power, there, there there's. There's prophecy. They're all manifestations of your glory. So we just ask Abba Yahuwah that you just take control, lead us and guide us, and lead me Abba Yahuwah for your esteem and for your glory. None of my own. We ask these things. We pray in the precious name of our, of our Hallelujah. So let it be. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, once again, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, I'll be coming from... Uh, the book of Nehemiah, and I'll be coming out of chapters eight and nine, and um, I believe the focal point is restoration. Um, and before I get into the eight and nine, I just want to say this was a, a very um, uh, moving activity. Um, they were coming back into the land and. Um, you know, for I think it was about uh, one correct me. I think it was about they were in bondage uh, since before uh, this moment came to be to where they can be um, restored to Yah's. Uh, Brother Matt. It was, it was a very moving moment, and we'll see some of that in, throughout the passages. Yeah. Hey, brother May. Let me try to turn off your yeah, video. Yeah, if you could turn off your video, it might help. We're you're breaking up a little bit. Let's see if that helps. Okay. Is that better? Well, I'll go ahead. So far, it sounds all right. Okay. Um. So I don't know what all you heard, but I'll try to sum up what I said. I'll be coming out of Nehemiah eight and nine, and we'll be. I'll be touching on the aspect of restoration. Um, and uh, during these, during this time in Nehemiah, uh, they were coming out of captivity. Um, they were in bondage, I think, for about captivity for about seventy, close to seventy years, up until this point, I think it was. Um, so this was a very moving and touching moment for them um, to be restored. Um, so I plan to just read the chapters eight and nine, and then um, just highlight what. You know what I what I believe Yah um, pointed out to me, and just elaborate on them. Um, one thing that I like to do is I always like to apply scripture to everyday life, everyday moments that I have. Um, so you'll probably see some of that as well, um, referring you know going back to how uh, it looked, and how we might, how this might have looked for us as we have come into this new understanding, have been restored to Yah, um, in the, in the same way. 
in a sense, um, being restored to his Torah, to that understanding. Um, so let me, let's just get right into it. Um, me and my eight, I'll read this, I'll read eight and nine. Um, just bear with me with some of these names. Um, <laughs> because I was reading it myself, going over the names and I was like, man, like, okay, that's going to be a tongue twister. But, um, yeah, just bear with me, please. As I, cause, uh, this one chapter has a bunch of names that are not easy to pronounce. And I know I'm probably not pronouncing them the correct way, but I'm going to do the best I can. Praise Yah. Um, so starting in EMI 8, um, let's put that right here. Uh, EMI 8, verse 1. And when the seventh new moon came, the children of Israel were in their cities, and all the people gathered together as one man in one space that was in front of the water gate. And they spoke to Ezra, the scribe, to bring the book of the Torah of Moshe, which Yahuwah had commanded Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the Torah before the assembly of both men and women and all who could hear with understanding on the first day of the seventh new moon. And he read from it, and he read from it and opened the space in front of the water gate from the morning until midday before the men and women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people listened to the book of the Torah. And Ezra the scribe stood on the platform of wood with they, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Matiyah, Shema, Aniyah, Uriah, Hilkiah, uh, Hilkiah, and Messiah, Messiah, and on his right hand and on his left hand, Padiah. And Mishael and Malachiah and Hashem and Hashbanana, Hashbadana, Zechariah and Mash Halam. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed Yahuwah, the great Elohim. Then all the people answered, Amen, Amen, while lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshiped Yahuwah with their face to the ground. And Yeshua and Bani and Sherebiah, Yamin, uh, Sherebiah, Jamin, Azreen, Akuba, Shabbatiah, Hud. Jamin, Akuba, Ak, Akab, Shabata, Shabbatea, Huja, Masaya, Kalita, Azariah, Ezra, Juazbad, Hana, Palia, and the Levites caused the people to understand, and the people stood in their place. And they read in the book of the Torah of Elohim, translating to give sense and cause them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest, the scribes, and the uh, Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is set apart to Yahuwah, your Elohim. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the word of the Torah. Then he said to them, Go eat the fat and drink the sweet, and send portions to those whom none is prepared, for this day is set apart to our master. Do not be sad, for the joy of Yahuwah is your strength. And the Levites were silencing all the people, saying, Hush, for the day is set apart. Do not be sad. And all the people went to eat and drink and to send portions and make great rejoicing before, because they understood the word which, which was made known to them. And on the second day, the heads of the father's house of all the people, with the priests and the Levites, were gathered to Ezra, the scribe, in order to study the word of the Torah, and found written in the Torah, which they had commanded by Moshe, the children of Israel, should dwell in booths for the festival of the seventh new moon. And they should, and that they should announce and proclaim it in all their cities and you in uh, Jerusalem saying, go out to the mountains and bring olive branches of olive trees, myrrh branches and palm branches and branches of leafy trees to make booths as it is written. So the people went out and brought them and made themselves booths, each one on the roof of his house and in their courtyards and in his, and in, in, in their courtyards and in the courtyards of the house of Elohim. And they opened the space of the water gate and in the open space of the gate of Ephraim. And the entire assembly of those who had come back from captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Yeshua, son of Nun, 
until the day the children of Israel had not done Israel had not done so, and there were and there was very great rejoicing in a day by day, and day by day from the first day until the last day he read from the book of the Torah of Elohim, and he performed a festival of seven days, and on the eighth day there was an assembly according to the right rulings. Um, that was Nehemiah eight. Forgive me for the names, um, and I just wanted to go over some of the things that I highlighted that stuck out to me in that verse. Um, <clears throat> and from starting from the verse first, um, what stuck out to me where, uh, um, like I said in the beginning, like they were in captivity for a very long time. So when this moment came, when they were allowed to come back into the land, they were allowed to bring back the Torah. Um, it was a, a very just moment of, you know, I would say we, you know, they were there was some weeping, so there was sadness there, um, but um, it was just a moment of 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 just that reconnection of Yah restoring them to who they were as a people and um, restoring them to His Torah, to His uh, to His right rulings, to His righteousness that is for us. I want to focus on the eleven for a second, where um, and like I said, as I read scripture, I always apply to my own self. Um, so as I was reading this, um, you know, I was reflecting on my own encounter with Yah when I was when I felt like I was restored to um, the Torah and to that clear understanding of um, of who I am and 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 what I'm supposed to do as a follower of Yah. Um, and when it says, "Then the Levites were silencing all the people, saying, Hush, for this day is set apart,' because they were it was a it was a moment of um, you know they felt sad." And I reflect on when I came into this when I when He brought Torah into my life and the different emotions that I was feeling when it's like, you know, man, like when you, when you realize the, all the wrong that you have done, when you realize all the sinning that you have done, even when you're coming out of, of like, you know, different um, re religions or Christianity, um, uh, Hinduism, whatever it may be, you come out of and, and, and Yah brings you to this clear understanding, you know, there is that moment of, of, of man, that, that, that heartache or that saddening that is like, man, like, Man, I've been doing this wrong for so long with the with the mindset that I was doing something right. And um, but even in those moments, like it's a time for rejoicing because we finally it's like, yeah, like you finally get to understand and read, understand the scripture and what Yah was really saying. And you know, in that moment of sadness, you can have joy that Yah didn't leave me in my in that state of uh lawlessness without to be without law. He didn't leave them in that state of, you know of uh not understanding and just living because they were in captivity you know without without the torah without without anyone to teach them without anyone to understand and that was us at one point that was me at one point like you know i thought i was doing the right thing i thought i was walking in his righteousness but it was like no it, it was it was uh we were all misled but by those who are misled and those other people who were misled but praise god that just like in this chapter eight he restored them and caused them to understand he restored all of us and caused us to understand as well. And I just think that's a beautiful thing. Even when you get down to the bottom where he's talking about the feast and they went out and and, and, and got palm branches and and, and made uh, Sukkot for Sukkot and they built them in their houses. They built them on, on top of their houses in a courtyard. I, like, just think about those moments when we came into the understanding of Pesach and 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 and, and Passover and Feast of Malika Bread and how we were, you know, let's get all the leaven out of our house. Let's you. You know, and, and, you know, let's let's clean up ourselves and get the leaven out of our hearts. And, you know, it, you know, I know not just my family, but I know a lot of families were looking through their kitchen and, and throwing things out. You know, when you found out that you're not supposed to eat this and this has lard in it and this has this in it. And it's like, you know, it was moments, it's like those are joyful moments, you know, because it's like you could be sad and like, man, like I was doing so much wrong. But just like the, the, the priests were trying to tell them, like, no, this is a day of rejoicing, like. You know, y'all revealing this stuff to us, like, it's just a beautiful thing because now we can do it the right way. You know, so now when we step out of line, we have no excuse anymore. It's like, now we know the right thing to do. So let's continue on and continue to do it. God, Yah has restored us just like he restored them to, to the original way, to the ancient path, as some people call it. Um, and um, So it's just a beautiful thing that, you know, you see the emotion in the scripture, um, you see, you see it in the scripture and how uh, that, you know, because sometimes people read scripture and it seems like the people in it are so distant from us. But no, they were they were just like us. They were indulged in sin, just like us. Like they were 
Um, and they, you know, they were probably going to, you know, different things and being taught different things. But, you know, they were just like us. So it's like they're not someone who was so far off that we can't uh, relate to. But, you know, they were people just like us. And um, it's just a beautiful thing to see how when they when they found out and when the priests and the Levites caused them to understand, you know, that what, what did they do? Like they went out immediately and began to 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 build suit coats they've been to, like it was like is that it was like that call to action and i and that's for all of us when we when when, when y'all opens our eyes is that call for action so it's like we can't just sit idle you know even in this moment with me you know speaking on live to you all you know like i can't you know i can't just sit idle you know it's like he's given us all a task he's given us all a duty and some of us haven't found out that duty, but when he when he awakens us, when he restores us, it's like we need to seek after him to find out what it is we must be doing because they put action behind this restoration that they received. It wasn't just okay, he restored us. No, they they inquired to understand, and when they understood, they put it into practice. They did what they needed to do for the for the for his right rulings to 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 keep the Torah, to keep his laws and his commandments and his right rulings. And it's the same for us. So. It's just a beautiful thing when you see that and you can pull all that from the scripture. Um, because one thing about the scripture is you have to be able to apply it. Like you have to be able to make it real to you, make it come alive to you in a sense that it, it has to speak to you in a, in a natural realm. Not so much always a spiritual thing, but, you know, it, it comes to you in plain terms where you can, you know, be able to see that and say, man, like, wow, like that is speaking volumes to me. And as I was reading this, this, this was what this passage was doing because it reminded me so much when Yah restored me. And I'm pretty sure I'm hoping that it's, it reminds you of how when Yah restored you to this truth and this understanding. And and, the, and I know for me, and it was like the, <laughs> when I came into it, it was like so many questions and it was like almost like my mind was like just all over the place because I'm like, I'm, I'm looking, I'm thinking about fringes now. I'm thinking, I'm like my fringes, I'm thinking about, you know, everything that has lard in it and all these unclean things that I'm I'm, I'm associating with. And, I'm, and, it, and it was like a moment, but in that I had peace still because I knew that I was I was on the right path, you know, and it's nothing like knowing that you're walking up rightly how he wants us to walk through Yahushua Mashiach. Like it's, it's, we know that we're on the right path. And it's this this thing that we have been restored to his Torah is something that we can see from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. And we don't have to try to rely on philosophies of men to try to justify you know, an idea that doesn't line up. We, what we're walking in can be seen, fairly seen from the beginning to the end of the book. And it's just a beautiful thing that y'all restored all of us to that. And so just praise y'all. Um, but yeah, eight is a beautiful chapter. Um, like I said, as I was reading it, it was just reminding me of my own personal, um, my personal walk in that moment where y'all opened my eyes. Um, and, uh, it, like I said, it was a time of rejoicing for them. Um, he said, "Go eat the fat, you know, drink the sweet, send portions to those who, who, uh, who none is prepared." And just look at that as when we come into this tour, not to bash people, but when we, when Yah restores us, we should go and help our brothers and our sisters, those who who may not be in His walk yet, but you know, will be willing to receive what you're saying to them. You know, and that's how I look at that. When we say drink the fat, go get portions, go share, go teach, go, go, go show, try to show someone the way. Of course, being led by the Ruach HaKodesh because you don't want to overstep your boundaries sometimes. You don't want to be in a place to where uh, you're just, you know, just doing it without the leading of Yah. Because if you're doing it without the leading of Yah, then, you know, it, it, a, a lot of roadblocks can come and you can turn a lot of people off. But when you're led by his Ruach HaKodesh, like when he's the one leading you, you every word to be precise, every word spoken to be edifying, every word spoken to uplift, every word spoken to uh, uh, penetrate the heavy heart and the heavy mind. Because it's not just it's not about us at all. It's about Yah getting His word spoken. So just praise Yah for the restoration um, that He didn't just allow Israel to receive during this time in the Book of Nehemiah, but in our own lives as well. All right, so. That was chapter eight of Nehemiah. Um, I'm gonna move on to chapter nine, and I'm pretty much gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna try to read it, but then show you, communicate what I felt y'all pouring out into me, and hopefully that it can be edifying and uplifting to you all. Um, 
So we'll start with now. And once again, please bear with me with these names because <laughs> there's a list of them again, and I'm going to try my best. All right, Nehemiah chapter 9. Now, in the 20 and the 20 and fourth day of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and with sackcloth and the earth upon them. And the seed of Israel, um, and the seeds of Israel, the children of Israel separated themselves from all the strangers and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in their place and read the book of the Torah of Yahuwah, their Elohim. And on the fourth part of the day, in another fourth part, they confessed and worshiped Yahuwah, their Elohim. Then stood up on the stairs of the, of the Levites, uh, Yeshua and Banim. Uh, Kadamel, uh, Shabaniah, ba Bunin, Sherebiah, Banin, and Chanan, Chanin, and cried with the loud voice unto Yahuwah their Elohim. Then the Levites, then the Levites, Yeshua and Kadmiel, Kadmiel. Banin, Hash, Banaya, Sarabaya, Hajaya, Shebaniya, and Pataniya said, Stand up and bless Yahuwah your Elohim forever and never, and blessed be the glorious name which is exalted above all, all blessing and praise. Thou, even thou art Yahuwah alone. You alone, you are Yahuwah, you alone. You have made the heavens and the heavens of the heavens with all their hosts, the earth and all that are on it, the seas and all that are in them. And you gave and you give life to them all and the host of the heavens and the, and the host of the heavens and bowing themselves to you. You are Yahuwah, the Elohim who chose Abraham and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldees and gave him the name Abra Abram and brought him out of the Ur of the Chaldeans and gave him the name Abraham and found his heart trustworthy before you and made a covenant with him and gave the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Pesrosites and the Yebusites and the Gergesites to give to his seed. And you have established a word for you are righteous and saw the afflictions of our fathers in Misraim in Egypt and heard their cry by the sea of reeds and gave signs and wonders against Pharaoh and against all the servants and against all the people of the land. For you knew that they acted proudly against them. You and you made a name for yourself as it is this day. And you split the sea before them and they passed over into the midst of the sea on dry land. And their pursuers were thrown into the deep as a stone into the mighty waters. And you let and you let them by day with a cloudy column. And by night with a column, of, a column of fire to give them light in the way they were to go. And you came down on Mount Sinai and spoke with them um, from the heavens and gave them straight rulings and to rot of truth, good laws and commands. And you made known to them your set apart Sabbath and you commanded them and you commanded and you commanded them commands and laws and to rot by the hand of Moshe, your servant. And you gave them bread from heaven and their hunger and brought them water out of the rock from their thirst and said to them, go and possess the land which you have sworn to give them. But they and their fathers acted proudly and they hardened their necks and did not obey your commands and they refused to obey. And they remembered not your wonders that you did among them and hardened their necks in their rebellion. They appointed a leader to a leader to return them to bondage, but you are a forgetting Alua, showing favor and compassion and patience and of a great loving commitment and did not forsake them, praise Yah. Even when they made a molded calf for themselves and said, this is your mighty one that brought you up out of uh, Egypt and worked great blasphemies, yet you and your great compassion did not forsake them in the wilderness. The column of fire did not turn away Hallelujah, did not turn away from them by day to lead them on the way, nor the column of fire by night to give them light in the way they were to go. You also gave them a good spirit to instruct them 
and did not withhold your manna from their mouth and gave them water for their thirst. And for 40 years, you sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked not. Their garments did not wear out. And their feet did not swell. And you gave them rains and peoples and appreciated them to their, uh, apportioned them their lots. So they took possession of the land and the land of the sovereign of Shion and the land of the sovereign of Heshbon and the land of Og, sovereign of Bashan. And you increased their children as the stars of the heavens and brought them into the land which you had said to their fathers to go into and possess the sons and the sons went in and possessed the land and you humbled before them the people of the land the canaanites and gave them into their hands and they were in with their sovereigns and the people of the land to do with them as they desired and they captured the walled cities the rich land and possessed houses filled with all goods cisterns already dug vineyards and olive trees and fruit trees and plenty so they ate and were satisfied and grew fat and delighted themselves in your great goodness. But they became disobedient and rebelled against you and cast your Torah behind their backs. And they killed your prophets and had warned them to and you and your prophets who had warned them to bring back to yourself. And they were great blasphemies. Therefore, you gave them into the hand of their enemies who distressed them. And in that time of their distress and they cried to you you heard from heaven and according to your great compassion you gave them saviors who saved them from the hand of the enemies but after they had rest and they turned back to do evil before you then you left them in the hand of their enemies so that they ruled over them but when they turned back and cried unto you you heard from heaven and delivered them according to your compassion many times many times and, and warned them to bring back and warned them to bring them back to your Torah. But they acted proudly and did not obey your commands and sinned against your, your right rulings, which if a man does, he shall live by them. And they gave the rebellious shoulder and hardened their necks and were not here. And you had patience with them for many years and did not warn them by your spirit. Um, by the by your spirit, by the hand of your prophets, yet they would not give ear. Therefore, you gave them into the hand of the people of the lands. But in your great compassion, you did not make an end of them, nor forsake them. For you are an El of favor and compassion. And now our Elohim is great and mighty and awesome El, guarding the covenant and loving commitment. Let not all the trouble that has come upon us, our sovereigns and our heads, our priests and our prophets, our fathers, and all your people from the days of sovereigns of Ashar until the days until this day seems little before you. In all that has come up, come upon us, you are righteous, for you have done truth, but we have done wrong. And our sovereigns, our rulers, our priests, and our fathers have not done your Torah, nor heeded your commands and your witness with which you witnessed against them, for they have not served you in, in their reign. Or is you have gave them the goodness that you have gave them or in the Lord or in the large and the rich land which you set before them from their evil deeds see we are servants today in the land that you gave for our fathers to eat the fruit and the good of it see we are serving in it and it is rich yield goods and its rich yield goes to the sovereigns you have set over us because of the sins because of our sins and they rule over our bodies and our livestock, uh, their pleasure, and we are in great distress. And because of all this, we are making a trustworthy pledge and write it. And our rulers, our Levites, our priests, shall their seal upon it. Praise Yahuwah. Um, man, it was so much, uh, <laughs> so much um, to unpack in this, in this, in this, uh, chapter um i probably won't be able to unpack it all but um man he just went through the history just of 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 israel um through their victories through their obedience um but also through their downfall through their 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 neglect their their willingness to neglect it wasn't and it seems like it wasn't a forceful neglect a neglecting of his law 
it was like a willingness to neglect his law, neglect his Torah, what they knew. Um, and it's, it's um, even after seeing so many marvelous works and so many great signs and, and man, to, to, to be in that place. But one of the most beautiful things is that, let me find it real quick. Uh, right here, verse 17. Um, through all that disobedience, through all the blaspheming, through all the the willing, the 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 neglecting, of, the the neglecting and complete disregard of a Torah that they clearly understood, um, it says, "But you are a forgiving alua, showing favor, compassion, and patience, and of a great loving commitment, and did not forsake them." Like man, like you just. Man, like, you know, everybody walk is different with, with, with Yah and Yahusha, and everybody walk different paths. Um, so everybody's past is different. Um, everyone, you know, you know, we all, you know, you have some people who went through a lot, some people who, who went through a little, some people might have had it on easy street, but we all have things that we went through in this walk with Yah. And um, even in, our, in those moments of willingly disobeying him, his compassion, his patience, his loving commitment towards us, even in our lack of understanding, um, man, like it's still so strong. And you'd be like, well, how? Because you're here today. <laughs> like we're here today. We're here with this clear being restored, just like they were restored. We have been restored to this ancient path. So it's like, I see myself in this scripture. Like we should all see ourselves in this chapter. We should all see the 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 heartache that we 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 put not just ourselves through and plenty our family members but Yah through but in his compassion in his loving commitment and his patience man like just think about all the things that you have done willingly when you willingly knew who he was even even I'm not even talking about you know the 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 the, the doctrines that are built on misunderstanding and um, misunderstandings and not fully complete understandings, but just in, even when you were in those places and you still willingly disobey yeah, the different things that we continue to do on a daily basis and just how his compassion didn't fail. And it's just, it's just a beautiful thing that like when I read this, I can only think of myself in my, in, in my own life and just say, praise Yah that, his loving commitment that he's that type of Elo Allah, that he's that type of, of of Elohim that doesn't hold those things against us. And it's just a beautiful thing, man. And that just speaks volume because this chapter is just filled with 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 you know his love, his compassion, and how he holds us and how he walks with us and how he shapes us, how he he has been that cloud. He has been that 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 cloud by night and that fire by day in, in a lot of our lives. He has been the the the, the one that we had to cling on to, um, and and or a lot of our lives were similar to this. In those moments, we clung to him, but then we would backslide and, and mess up. In those moments, we clung to him, but we would backslide and mess up. So, if anything, also this should show you that that. You know, there's nothing to there's 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 no past that y'all can't forgive. You know that like it doesn't say all the blasphemies that they that they committed. But if we go through the tour, we can see you know they were you know sacrificing children at sometimes they were they were doing a lot of wicked things. When you go back and read through the, the Torah, um, and I used to, and I even when I look at those things, it's like man, like Matt, like you did some things, but man, like you know. They did some things as well, some things that you probably didn't even think about doing, but still y'all had compassion on them and chose to restore them. Yeah, they went through some things because of what they done. They went through there. There was some. There was some consequences. Like you know, we're going to go through some things. You can clearly see that when they wanted, he he clearly said that you know he sent them into to captivity for the wrong that they done, but he didn't leave them there, and he didn't leave us where we were. He didn't leave us in the prison cells. He didn't leave us in in, in, in in those places where we don't even want to mention sometimes because we all know where we, we where we some of us has come from. But he pulled those from those places and didn't leave us there and just restored us to this Torah, to this pure understanding, his righteousness. This the, what we're living about now is his righteousness for all of us. 
and he restored us to that. And uh, just seeing that, man, it just it just it just spoke to me. And this, you know, this is how I I, I read the scripture. So I can only give it to you how I how how it comes to me. And when I read it, I just I have to plug myself into it. I have to to, to make it apply, um, and make it apply to 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 so I can have a a. a, a so I can really feel what's being said. And, you know, because when I was younger, I used to just read scripture. You know, I would just read it sometimes just to read it. But now when I read to understand, I read to apply. And like when I read this and I see that restoration, it's like, man, like we're all oh, this has been this is everyone who's in this walk. At some point, this was us. At some point, we were the children of Israel walking through that, the, the you know, obedient, being disobedient. But y'all restored us to that, to that, to that proper place, that, that. That, that place of his righteousness. So we're now we know. So now we have no excuse. We have no excuse now because he, he revealed himself to us. He showed himself to us. Now it's our duty and our responsibility. Like when you get down to the last chapter, what did they say? And because of all this, we are making a trustworthy pledge and write it. And our rulers and our Levites, our priests, set their seal on it. And that's how we have to be. Like we saw, like we, we, he clearly woke us up and showed us. Now we have to say, Yah, for you I live, for you I die. It's, it's, it's that moment. There's no, there's no going back at this point. There's, there's no, there's no going back. There's no thorn in a towel, no matter how difficult it gets. And, you know, I know we all been through, through some things. Y'all, I don't know if you all, were, with my own testimony with my son, we all, we all been through some things, but we got to get to the point where it's for Yah I live and for Yah I die. No matter what happens, do no. I don't. I don't care what situation I face. I don't care what I'm going through. I don't care how the end's going to play out. What I do know is that I'm gonna set this seal on what He has shown me, and I'm not going to turn my back to Him because He has restored us. He has restored me to this true full understanding of who he is and my purpose in him and in Yahusha. So I, there's no other way for me to go. No matter what happens, praise God that, that situation with my son turned out to be a beautiful testimony. But if it had not, there's I still couldn't turn my back on it because he's my all in all. Like where where can we go from this point? Who can we turn to? Th th there's no one else. So it's just Praise Yah just for restoring not just the Israel in these chapter eight and nine, but restoring us as well. So when you go back, I want you, if you all go back and read these verses, and, you, and you're reading over them tonight, if you, if you if you choose to, just just pitch your place and pitch just plug yourself in right there. Just plug yourself into those to those chapters and those verses, and just and just just I, I guarantee you to just bring you to a place where all you can do is ex, just exalt Yah. Because you'll see how he carried you. You'll see how he carried. I see how he carried me, and the, the different storms and struggles that he brought me through, the highs and the lows, the victory and the defeats. Everything he was always there, and that's what you clearly see in these texts. Even through their captivity, he was there. Even through their struggle, he was there. He never. And what did what did Yahushua say? I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So I just encourage you go read these verses and. I didn't do it how, how you know, the, the line upon line, breakdown of breakdown. Um, but I, 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 I gave it how I felt. Yeah, giving it to me. Um, and there was, like I said, I hope you go back and read eight and nine because there's so much to unpack. Like there's a lot to unpack in these two chapters. Um, but from focusing on the restoration um, of, of Israel at this time, you can see that they went through a whole lot of turmoil. They went through a whole lot of, of self-inflicting turmoil as well. But even in that turmoil, even in that self-inflicting turmoil, what I clearly see in these verses is that God, God's love and his compassion did not fail. His favor did not fail. His love did not fail. And in those situations, even when they probably was in the darkest of times, being overruled by foreign sovereigns and, and, and people taking their land as they said in the text they were they were taken from them they didn't even get to own their own the, the, the own stuff that they were growing that was being taken from them even in those moments where they probably were you know completely distraught completely defeated 
completely defeated. Yah's, Yah's love, mercy, and grace was still there. His compassion. And you can clearly see it because he restored them to his right ruling, to his commandments. So just pray, Yah. Um, I pray that, you know, I hope that was edifying. Um, I, I encourage you all to read 8 and 9 because I didn't, you know, it's a, it's a lot to unpack. And I know I didn't unpack all of it. But I just encourage you all to read those two chapters and just just as you read them, just reflect, read and reflect, read and reflect, read and reflect. And because um, it's a beautiful, a beautiful, beautiful um, uh, uh, display of Yah's love. It's a beautiful, beautiful display of his, his, his compassion and how he, it does not fail in spite of how we are, our shortcomings. His love is consistent. It's not like he's not like man. Where love can be shaky and inconsistent. His love is consistent. It's consistent. Um, some and whenever it, there's a situation, sometimes it's all. I always say that it's always. It's never Yah. It's always me. It's never Yah. Like when I when I get in a little funky mood, it's not Yah. It's me. It's I'm getting I'm getting overworked on my my. I'm getting let and the enemy playing my mind too much. I'm letting him distract me too much. I'm letting him, you know, afflict me too much to where I got to say, you know, I, I rebuke that in the name of Yahushua and, and focus on Yah and focus on what Yah tells me to focus on his, and his purpose and plan for my life. So I just encourage you all. God has restored us. <laughs> he has restored all of us to his to, to his perfect Torah. Do Yahushua Mashiach. And uh, let's just let's just continue to embrace Yah in spite of what we're going through. Uphold his Torah his commandments and his right rulings. And we're doing that. We're keeping a feast. We're, 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 we're excited for the feast. You know, these, these days to come around, you know, we used to be in, in those worldly holidays and those, but now he's restored us out of that. So let's just keep on, let's just keep on uh, walking our rightly before him according to his right rulings, not according to the standards of man, not according to what the, the standards of this person, that person, but the standards that Yah has set before, before us. So praise Yahuwah. Um, I hope I hope and pray that you are able to grab something from that. And I do encourage you, please, if you have time, read eight and nine of Nehemiah and just gleam and just and just let Yah speak because he spoke, man, to me when I was reading it, and it was it was a beautiful thing. So praise Yah. Um and you all have a a great uh feast of unleavened bread, and I hope your Passover was great as well. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Great reminder, brother. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. See some things. See Praise some Yah. Things, brother, and um, <clears throat> you definitely don't have to apologize for the way that you express. There's a divert the way that you expressed your gift. There's a diversity of gifts. You know, same gift comes in different ways. And one of the things that, you know, if you remember, we told you, let Yah use you the way he's going to use you. You you don't have to be bound to any cookie cutter expression. Um, and I just, I just really liked how you grasped, you know, the passage um, and you were able to pull out um, the most important parts, you know, uh, verse 8 of chapter 8. So they read distinctively from the book of the law of Yahuwah and gave the sense and helped them understand. Um, and when you have those three things, you know, reading it, you know, um, clearly, you know, understanding it clearly, that, that explain it, you know, not just read it, but explain it. And then to apply it. And I think all of the examples you used um, express the application of the word um, and, and cult cultivating all of that into the movement of the people because they heard, because they understood, they were able to apply it and then do, you know. So praise Yah um, for your expression, brother. You did a great job. Um, and I'm excited. I'm excited for, for what Yah is going to do with you. Uh, I see a whole lot, brother. And uh, just be encouraged. And I want to open it up for the elders to, to also encourage and then to the rest of you. Praise Yah, brother. Hallelujah. Well, I appreciate 
what you brought today, brother, you know, uh, like brother Rod said, you don't need to apologize about anything. You know what? We all have struggles getting into those names. You know, sometimes you just got to go on through them, you know, uh, best you can. And you did a good job. You know, I, I've been there. I know I struggle with them too. So, you know, but the thing that that's matters is that you got the, the gist of what the message is talking about and what it's speaking to us, what it spoke to you. So I appreciate that you were able to, uh, you know, illuminate that for us and encourage us to, you know, to see things from a different perspective, to be able to put ourselves in the, in those scriptures. And that's a good thing to be able to do. Um, so I, I'm very uh, excited about the future that, that, that you have uh, with uh, working and delivering more messages. And uh, so, you know, this is the beginning of a, a great future that Yahuwah has called you to. I think that the more comfortable you get with it, the better that you're going to, you know, get the jitters off. Uh, you know, you started with some jitters, but as you kept going, it started to get more and more comfortable, more and more, you know, fluent and powerful. The message came out. And so sometimes we got to get out of our own way, get out of our heads and just let it flow. So, um, but there's a couple scriptures I want to, that, that brought to mind as you were reading this. Uh, the first one is in Isaiah 42. Uh, and basically it says, behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, and whom my, sight of my soul delights. I have put my Ruach upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it her heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break. And faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlines wait for his Torah. Thus saith Elohim Yahuwah, who created the, the Shemayim and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and Ruach to those who walk in it. Jeremiah is, this is a portion of scripture that really brought it home for me. Uh, this one is in 24 verse seven. It says, I will give them a heart to know that I am Yahuwah and they shall be my people and I will be their Elohim for they shall return to me with their whole heart. This is what we see and displayed here within this assembly uh, and other places that Yahuwah is calling his people back. He is restoring us He's bringing us out of the, the ways uh, that we were raised and taught. Jeremiah 31, 24 says, I, the word that came to Jeremiah from Yahuwah, the say Yahuwah, the Elohim of Yasserel, write in a book all the words that I have spoken to you. For behold, days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I will restore the fortunes of my people, Yasserel and Yehuda, says Yahuwah, and I will bring them back to the land that I gave to their fathers and they shall take possession of it. These are the words that Yahuwah spoke concerning Yasserel and Yehuda. Thus saith Yahuwah, we have heard a cry of panic, of terror and no peace. But then it continues to go on in 29. It says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares Yahuwah, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares Yahuwah, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares Yahuwah, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. You know, there are a couple more that spoke to me, but those ones there were really uh, speaking to me as I was listening to your message. And so I just want to encourage you, you know, continue to to pursue him in all your ways as you've spoken and, you know, and get ready and settle into what he's calling you into brother. So thank you for being obedient and, and, and delivering this message for us today. Hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you. Um, brother Jadio. So, uh, Ezekiel three, uh, verse one, it says, "It says, moreover, Yahuwah said to me, Son of man, eat 
that you find, eat this scroll and go speak to the house of uh, Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat the scroll. And he said to me, son of man, cause your belly to eat and fill your bowels with this scroll that I give to you. Then did I eat it? And it was in my mouth as honey, the sweetness. And he said to me, son of man, go get you unto the house of Israel. Speak with my words unto them. You know, so one of the methods that you brought out is one of the one of the main ways that we all should approach sharing Yah's word is to first receive the message that Yah is giving you. You know, in these in these places, there's people who want to tell other people to receive these things, but they are not personally receiving it, you know. And I could hear from the testimony, I could hear from the way that you was you was getting hype in there. You was you was sharing your experience. You received the message from Yah. And that's how Yah enables you to give a message is by you having it. You know, you can't give a message you don't have. You can't teach a message you don't have. You can just reiterate information, but you can't teach it. You can't share it. You can't touch people with the Ruach through it if you have not been affected. So this is just something everybody, you know, to keep in mind, even when we're sharing with our families, when we're sharing with our parents, when we're sharing with our friends, you have to have that message. There's many people who would say, I see that you believe it. <laughs> you know, I see you. You know, they feel they feel motivated by your belief in it, by your joy in it, by your excitement in it, by your strength in it. And, and I, could, I heard that uh, today, um, the strength behind the experience. Uh, so as you were sharing, you is I, I heard the desire that you wanted other people to experience it too, and that's how you spread the the glad tidings is to is to you can't give people the experience, but when they hear see that you experienced it, that's what allows them to hear your words and want to experience it too. So praise yeah, um, definitely encouraging, definitely everybody check those chapters out. It, it definitely was a blessing. Praise you. Praise you. <clears throat> Absolutely. Well, let's encourage your brother um, by a show of hands. And uh, Brother Joshua, you had your hand up. Did you want to share something with uh, our brother? Uh, yes, I just wanted to say that uh, all praise to the Most High Yahweh. And that um, I wanted to testify to his work that as he was speaking, I just, you know, couldn't help but listen in. Even though I was listening in, I had to felt like this draw in more intently to the words that he was speaking. And uh, just to, to let him know that that I believe that he is being used right now by Yahweh. He is definitely being used right now. Yahweh. So I just wanted to testify to Yahweh's work through him. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Absolutely. Uh, Brother Dean. Shabbat Shalom. Um, I literally just uh, want to second uh, what brother joshua just said um what was being spoken you know <laughs> he's the light of truth so when the light is coming forth there's no hiding there's no hiding and what uh brother matt was being used you know yahweh used you today he used you today on me as i'm sitting here you know there's so many so many old battles i call them old battles they're not new they're old battles but yahuwah used you today to remind me i am restored you know i can sing a song that i know the melody and know the words but to pierce my soul and to bring about shalom that's different that's different only yahuwah can do that only yahuwah you know, I have beautiful children, I have a beautiful wife, I have many beautiful things, but Shalom, oh, for me, <laughs> Yahuwah knows, he knows. So thank you for allowing yourself to be used in the manner in which you were used. Um, and, and thank you for, for, for making it a petition. 
it, it was just it was not just a reading not just a dissecting you were petitioning you were petitioning and and um you, you, you know I, I think the scripture says wisdom cries out in the street you know um and it was like it was if you know there was a crying out and i couldn't i couldn't pretend i couldn't hear i couldn't pretend i couldn't hear so hallelujah and when you went to nine chapter nine before you um even before you said um you know when you went to summarize chapter nine the thing that jumped out to me also was um i think it was nine um let me just check it was nine seven i think it was yeah i had written down just before you spoke uh 932 and in block capitals i wrote the words loving commitment and then when you spoke you said 917 and this again was what you drew out and it just you know it just made me think about you know he loves commitment he is as as has been testified he is consistent in his love but he also loves commitment so when someone loves something they don't not just love to share it with you but they also like to receive that thing they don't they you know so it, it just made me you know it just challenged me but also combined with restoration and his mercy it it showed me that even if i've fallen short you know his love is that i continue in the way continue to 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 look to him to cling to him because he loves commitment hallelujah hallelujah thank you so much told the rabbi abba yahuwah but brother thank you so much and thank you that this 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 family this assembly allows <laughs> you know for 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 for, for individuals to be used in a new way you know the, the, the word says clearly I, I do a new thing yahuwah says i do a new thing so you know as i said when you're dealing with some old things you're gonna need some new things to break up some old things hallelujah praise yeah praise yeah he's waiting you know to show himself mighty on, on behalf of those who seek after him you know matt was talking about what Ezra was doing and, and, and one of my favorite verses is Ezra 7.10 and it says for Ezra sought after the law of your Lord to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments so exactly what um, Brother Jadiel was saying as far as Ezekiel and, and finding the word and, and, and having it come alive in you and basically what you're giving the people is just a residue of what you already received. Ezra received it first. He did it first. And then he taught in Israel statutes and judgments. So that is the way it's supposed to go. And uh, that reminded me of, 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 of your expression as well. Um, great job. Sister Shamil. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. I um, thank you uh, for being used. Absolutely. I agree with the, with the brothers that just spoke. Uh, I, I thank, thank you for Yahuwah for using you, the reminders, all that, everything. I just wanted to just piggyback on that as well. And um, the, this just, it did remind me where right here, verse 10 and 8 and 10 at the end there when it's for this day is uh, set apart to our Yahuwah. Do not be sad for the joy of Yahuwah is your strength. And I, I, I can't not remember that I, when I first came to this, I was like that. I was sad. I was, you know, in a dark place, it seemed like, you know. And, um, but I came out of that because there's, there's joy in Yahuwah, hallelujah, because of the grace I've woken up. And again, I'm woken up today. You said, brother Matt, that we're doing all this in, you know, remembrance of Yah, you know, we're keeping his Sabbaths, his appointed days, his feast days and, and such, you know, this is my first time really getting into it before it was just, I'm just following whatever. Now I'm like in it. And even though I, I probably didn't all, didn't do it all so, so correctly, 
you know what? He still loves me. He still loves all of us. He still shows us grace and mercy. And I, I, I am so excited um, for you, for us, for everyone, you know, who's fi fi finding this, who's feeling this. Yesterday when I was, I was like, oh, no, I didn't throw away this piece of crust. It has to throw it in the garbage. You know, I, I ran to the garbage. I threw it out. I just threw it like if I was throwing a baseball. I just boom and chugged it to the garbage. I don't need that. You know, and I didn't care because at first I was like, oh, I, I might have to save this. No, I don't need to save nothing because what? Because Yahoo is going to make sure we are fit. He's going to make sure that we are that we have the needs that we need. Hallelujah. I just thank you. I, I thank you. I thank Yah through you for working through you. Just everything. Hallelujah. I thank you, this assembly for Yahoo. Oh my goodness. Everything. I am excited. And thank you again for um, just being so transparent and just, you know, uh, it, it's, this is wonderful. Thank you. All of you. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Um, yeah, that's funny. Uh, reminded me of the first time to just get, you know, get it out of here. Get, you know, what's in there? You know, when you first find out, <laughs> he said she threw it like a baseball. Praise God. Um, um, man. Um, Brother Matt, you want to share anything more to the people? Please, yeah. Um, uh, that you were all able to grab something is all for his esteem, for his glory. Um, like we all are, we're just vessels being used. So um, just all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh. Um, and that's it. It's, you know, let's just keep pushing to, 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 um, exalt him not just in our words but in our actions in our in our daily life um, we are the light of that we are the light of the world so when they see us they just see a reflection of a out they should see a reflection of his torah being displayed through us um so let's just con i just encourage you all you know just continue to be the light thank you all for your 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 words of encouragement um uh, i really felt them and i appreciate them but ultimately it's all glory to yah um he's the source um, he's the one speaking. Um, so I just praise you all for all he's done. And I thank you all for your kind words. So just praise you Let's just keep pressing in. Let's just keep pressing in. It's, it's, a, it's a rough battle. It's a, it's, this walk's not easy. It's a fight. You know, it's a mental fight. Um, but let's, let's just build up our faith, you know, seeking, studying, um, knowing who we are. Um, knowing who you are sometimes is, is all you need to know. Once you know you're a child of the, you're, you're a child of the king. Um, that that mindset can can take so so, so you know further um, because you're not you don't get this you know sidelined by the distraction by the enemy you know so just just I just encourage us all to just continue to press in and just continue keep exalting Yah like I said not just with our words but with our actions um, um, and this one thing is coming to me it was from uh, um, the person is not in this walk but it was a, a message that I heard. He said, you know, what characteristics do you display that when someone sees you, they'll know that you love Yah? Um, so just let that just just meditate on that. Like what like what are we displaying? What are we showing to our loved ones, to you know, to those who see us every day? Let's just push and strive to be better. Yeah, we may have days where we mess up. We may have days where we stumble. We have days where we, we, we do what we're you know, we do something that we're not supposed to. But remember that we've been restored and just like his loving commitment stayed with Israel through all that time of disobedience, you know, he's still here, he's still with us. Let's get up, dust our face, dust our pants off, repent from a sincere heart and really turn and not do it again. So that's all that's I get <laughs> I mean praise y'all. I ain't wanna mean to say all that. Hey, hey, you can't you can't hand a mic to a preacher. They they'll just keep preaching. Praise y'all. I knew you had more than you. Um and and that's the way the word is when it gets seeps deep down in your soul. And I think your final words, um, you know, should stop all of us in our tracks and how we present ourselves to the world. 
And and now's the time that if it's not right to correct it. So praise you family. Um, and the brother was, you know, the brother, I'll say this about Matt. He was not only humble and obedient to, to first Yah, but made himself available to us and was was humble and obedient, kept within the time frame that we set forth and just allowed Yah to use him. You know, all of those things matter in the, in the frame of being a leader, right? So um, oh, I think Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we're going to also hear from three more brothers um, that Yah has given the opportunity for us to see clearly that it's time to to bring them up. So, um, praise Yah. Um, all right. So this will conclude um, our study for the day. We'll stop the recording and then some final um, remarks. Toda Roba, praise Abba Yah from whom all Baraka flow. We hope this video encouraged you today. Don't forget to study to show yourself approved and be like the Bereans who tested everything. According to 2 Timothy 3.15 and Acts 17.11, we assemble every Shabbat and during the week with like-minded believers all over the world, virtually, and sometimes we gather in person for feast days. We have something for the whole family, including children. Discover more on our website at assemblyofyahuwah.com, where you can apply to join, give the biblical assembly needs, and find many biblical resources to help you grow in your walk with Yah. To know when we publish new videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Jeremiah 33 3 tells us, call to Yahuwah and he will answer you. Tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Much shalom.